Welcome back to Millie and Cockapoo. Today's video is going to be on Millie's spay journey. So today is Friday the 23rd of July 2021 and she went in for her spay. Millie is over a year old when I've chosen to take her in for a spay and I let her have one season prior to being spayed. I chose to wait until after she'd had a first season because on the research I'd done, it suggested that when you spay your dog is the hormones that they get locked into and they're gonna be more mature and not have the puppy hormones if you spay them after the first season. But honestly, all the research I did, it was a 50-50 split between whether you should do it before a season or afterwards. So it's honestly your personal preference as to what you think you should do with your dog. And I recommend you speak to your vet, any dog specialist in your life and do your own research before you make a decision on that. In terms of the actual surgery, I had to wait 13 weeks after Millie's season for her to go for a spay because that's when the hormones are at the lowest. And last night she wasn't allowed to eat from after midnight. So in preparation, I gave her an evening meal at around six o'clock like normal. And then I gave her a smaller evening meal at about 10 o'clock at night as recommended by the vet because then she couldn't eat before she went in for the op. She was allowed to have water throughout though, which is a godsend because at the moment we're going through a heat wave in England, which is about 26 degrees, which is hot. And in England, we don't have aircon, so it gets really warm inside. So if she couldn't have had any fluids, I think she would have been passing out. This morning, prior to her going in for the operation, I had to make sure she went for the toilet and took her out for a short walk. And then I dropped her off at eight o'clock in the morning. Millie isn't a big fan of the vets and she always freaks out a little bit. So I have to carry her in and she hates getting taken away from me in the vets. But whenever I speak to them in past occasions, she's always fine once she can't see me anymore. Millie isn't having a keyhole spay and I can't remember the actual term of her spay, but it's just the normal one, just because our vet doesn't offer that. I also chose to get blood tests done and speak to my vet, they said it wasn't something I had to do with her being so young, but it would give them a good indicator of if she needed any different meds when she was under anaesthetic. And also in future, if she has any problems, that doesn't give a baseline of what her bloods are like at the moment. And it could potentially identify any potential problems that she has at the moment. So I chose to get it done and just be on the safe side. Along with having her spay, Millie's also having two canines removed. They are her top two canines and the baby canines and that just didn't fall out. Her adult teeth grew in in front of them. So when she went for her six month checkup, the vets obviously noticed this and they said it was best to have them taken out at the same time she was spayed. So she only had to go under anaesthetic once. And in general, I think I was more nervous than her. I was shocked I was actually able to drop her off this morning, but I did. And I've actually been okay. From the vet, she's getting a cone and I might get a surgical suit. I'm woman and ahhing about it. And I'm going to buy some baby grows. This is on a recommendation from a few people over on our Instagram, at Millia Cockapoo, who've also got small dogs. He said, instead of buying multiple surgical suits because you need to wash them, buy baby grows because when they're on the small side, they can fit into them and they still then can't get to the wound when you're with them because you have to keep an eye on them. And then when you're not in the house, they've got to wear the cone of shame. The vets have just called me and said that she's absolutely fine post-op. She was a bit groggy when she woke up, so they gave her an anti-sickness injection, which doesn't surprise me because she's quite a sickly dog. She's known for throwing up quite often. But in general, she's walking now and she's coming around. But she's going to stay there a couple more hours just to stay under observation and then I'll go pick her up. In a minute, you will see her in the coma of shame, which I don't think she's going to be happy about. I've just picked Millie up from the vets and they said she was good as gold. I can't remember if I mentioned this in the last clip, but they did have to give her an anti-sickness injection just because she was showing the signs of looking like she was going to throw up. And then they've given her a couple of pain meds and they've sent me home with some as well to last her the next few days. Otherwise, they've said to avoid her going up and down stairs and on and off any furniture. 
and that she's got to be wearing the cone at all times, especially when she's unsupervised, unless I put her in baby grows or a surgical suit. I'm leaving the cone on her for today and then tomorrow we'll put the baby grows on. I just got a packet of baby grows in the size 12 to 18 months and it's meant to have a weight of up to 12.5 kilograms for a baby. So I'm presuming these would be big enough for Millie. I got one out of the packet and it looked like the body was going to be long enough. And then I'll just have to cut a hole in for a tail. She's a very tired, lethargic, and she can't get comfortable in the cone. She keeps sitting up with like a head drooping down. And I would have shown you, but she's just sat down now, well, laid down. And she's actually taken herself off to her crate, which she doesn't really do that often out of her own choice. Well, maybe it's the only place she can really get comfortable. But here she is. You okay, Millie Moo? She's not been to the toilet or eaten and drinking anything since we've been home. So I'm going to keep an eye on her. And the vet said she didn't want to eat anything there either. It is now 20 to 6 in the evening. So, like two hours, roughly, since Millie came home. I picked her up at half past three. And she's just been outside for both a wee and a poo. Which I think is actually quite soon compared to most pups. They tend to be at least 12 hours or like pretty much the next day when they go. Yep, she went just then. Um, might be um, a bit TMI. But the poo was solid but runny at the same time. Which a vet warned me could happen. But if it turns into full diarrhea then I need to let them know so far she seems to be doing well other than just stopping and standing because she hates being in the comb. You okay Millie? See she just does this either in a crate or wherever she feels like she can just stand still. But you can see she's got a bandage on her belly and he said that that would be normal if it falls off, not to worry about it in the next few days, but just to leave it on for as long as possible. There's her little pink bandage on her leg where the IV went in, which she said I could take her off, but I think I'm just going to let you it for now. Also, I did give her a bath last night, um, but like round here is all matted and mucky again, but I thought I'd bath her the night before because they're not allowed baths. Well, they're not like really allowed to get wet until um, they've cleared all the up. Really? Oh, you got stuck on the chair, did you? Oh, sorry. Are you okay? Hmm. I'm just going to put her in in my hold. In my hold. Leave me be, Mom. Bloody dogs, me. I've just put Millie in a baby grow so you can see what she, how it sits. And she, well, I got her the 12 to 18 month old sizing, and it's pretty baggy around the neck. But body wise, stand up. Oh, I can't really move. Body wise, as you can see, it is pretty much the right fit for her. I've not bothered to cut in the hole in it, I've just put the tail through to one side. And if she's barking, this must be a sign that she's starting to feel a bit better. It's now about 8 o'clock in the evening, and I changed my mind and took the cone off of Millie and put her in the baby grow just because she wasn't getting comfortable and she needed to go to sleep and she couldn't get into her food bowl or a water bowl with the cone on. So I figured I'm here watching her so she'll be fine. And she has just eaten, not her normal amount. She normally has about 140 grams of the tribal sausage each meal and she had about 60 grams. She also had some of her pain medication and 
I put it inside some peanut butter so she'd eat it and she had that fine. But otherwise she's just been sleeping for the past, well, since the last update, it's the past three hours. And she's very lethargic and feeling sorry for herself. Aren't you Millie? Mm. It's now about 24 hours since Millie had her operation. And she's been like this for most of the day. So in her onesie, well onesie, baby grow, and like pretty much uh, dozing off most of the day. Yeah. You can see better from this angle that it just, just about fits her, the 12 to 18 month old baby grows. I apologise now for the state of me. But we've had pretty much a very chilled day and not really done anything. I'm making the most of it to be honest with you because once you get a dog you don't get very many lazy days. Millie slept through the night last night which I was quite worried about. I thought she'd be waking up and tossing and turning quite a bit because she had to sleep the cone on. But I put the cone on her and then I had her lead on her as well because she either sleeps on my bed on the floor and she normally moves between the two overnight but I didn't want her jumping on and off the bed because it is it's not really high but it's too high for it to be jumping on and off so she was on the lead all night and I was holding on to it so she couldn't jump off the bed she woke up at about half past six needing to go to the toilet but that's pretty much what time she get up anyway to be honest with you and like I said she's been sleeping most of today as well she had a tiny bit of breakfast but she wasn't too keen on it and then I've given her a couple of longer lasting natural treats just to make sure she is still eating and she's been drinking plenty of water as well. I haven't noticed any bleeding which I think is a good sign and every now and then she gets her energy back and she will start barking at things so I've had to shut the curtains in my living room so she can't see out and start barking at the cars and people walking past just because I want to keep her as calm as possible. I have had a couple of occasions where she's jumped on the sofa without me realising so I'm having to be quite anal about shutting doors when I'm leaving rooms and making sure that I'm taking her with me because otherwise if she's got the free reign of downstairs she's just jumping on and off the sofa. In terms of the pain medication the vets gave me enough to last her about one and a half days. In order to make her eat them I've been covering them in peanut butter and she's been eating it no problem and because she also had two teeth removed I've also noticed she's only wanted to eat softer things. She's not wanting her bones. We are now three days post-op and I noticed yesterday which was day two that Millie started getting her personality back by being more interested in what was outside the windows and then this morning <laughs> She was barking again at the neighbours. So I think she's feeling back to her normal self. I am now, however, having to keep both the baby grow and the cone of shame on her at all times because she is going for the wound because it's itching her. She's not very happy about it and I think it might just because it's warm. Like at the today it's 25 degrees and luckily I'm at home so we can, I can make the house cooler and put her in the cooler rooms but I think she's struggling in both because it is hot today, it's 25 degrees and I know if I was her I wouldn't want to baby grow on but we've just been for our first post-op checkup with the vets and they've told me to keep both of them on her um, because the wound's healing well but it's still not fully close together and it's going to probably take another week for it to get back to normal. She's now allowed to go for short walks between five and 10 minutes. So for us, that's just like walking around the estate. But because it's so hot, I'm going to have to do it either first thing in the morning or last thing at night. Otherwise, they said just to keep preventing her from jumping up and down as much as possible. Um, stop her from getting the wound. The shirt gets damp in any way. I need to change it straight away. Um, but they've taken off the, I don't know, the bandage now that was on it. I chosen to leave that on. They said that I could take it off, but I thought it's better on, better leaving it on so that she can't get to it as easy. Yeah, she's pretty much back to herself now, other than the heat getting to her. 
Yeah, I think that's pretty much about it. Her poos are now getting a lot more solid. But with it being so hot, Millie always gets slight softer poos when it's hot anyway. So that's probably not helping things, it being so warm. And I will try and show you the wound of what it looks like now. But she is nice and calm at the moment. So I'm not going to just... Oh, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. 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 I don't like the cumbly shape, do you? But also, I've had to start tying the cone to her collar because she's figured out she can get out of the collar of the cone. So even though it looks dry and with her ears pushed in, it's not. She can still get out of it. You look funny, Millie Moo. Yeah. And your top's falling down. You can't dress yourself. It's been a few days since I last updated you and Millie's been pretty much the same since day three personality wise and that's just fully back to her normal self. She had all of her appetite back at that point. She was a nightmare trying to not get to jump on and off the sofas and go up and down stairs and she just wanted to play and trying to keep her calm was the hardest thing. I found though that by having the cone on she was always a lot calmer and it stopped her from doing a lot of things. <laughs> like she couldn't go and hide under the sofa because the comb was too big and she struggled to walk up the stairs as quickly because the head was like outweighing her. So if you're finding your dog is still very hyperactive, maybe just try putting the cone on them to keep them calm. In terms of her poos, which is a bit TMI, by day five, they were back to being fully solid. But like I mentioned earlier, a lot of her diarrhea and put down to it being hot just because she gets the runs when it is a bit warmer anyway. Today is day 11 since her spay and she is fully back to normal. We've just been to the vet and she's been given the all clear. So I can take off the cone and the baby grow now. And I definitely recommend getting baby grows if your dog is small. The vets have just said that she can go back to her normal exercise now, but to build it up gradually. So we won't be climbing Ben Nevis this weekend, but we can go back to our half an hour walks for the next couple of days and then go back up to an hour at the weekend and then gradually build it back up to the long ones that we were doing every now and then, which I think she'll be thankful for because she's being cooped up inside. And I'm definitely gonna be thankful for because I'm ready to start going for our walks again. So I'm going to take off a cone now and I think she'll be very glad. And once everything's off, I will also show you the scar. I think I meant to show you earlier what the wound looked like and honestly it didn't look that much different to what it does now but I'll show you and then talk about it then. Freedom! You ready? And Freedom! And straight back to licking herself. Really? Who's got no going on? 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 Um, you can just kind of see, but she is still very bald here from where they put the IV. And I think it's going to take a while for that to grow back. She's also got a bald patch here. Um, you can't really see it on the camera. Do you want to show your wound off, Millie Moo? Oh, yeah, so, hey, can you see that scar there? That is the scar. There, that line is the scar between the nipples. And when they took off the bandage, it looked exactly the same, um, but it just got a bit of scab over it. But honestly, it's probably about that big. It's a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. Are you happy, Millie Moon? Not happy at all? Of the cone of shame on anymore. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps some of you that are either considering getting your dog spayed or you've already booked the appointment. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I was quite worried for Millie to go through it. But honestly, it was quite an easy process and the hardest part was keeping her calm. Which didn't end up being that difficult because you just put the cone on her. If you don't already then please subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a big thumbs up 
and comment down below if you've had your dog spayed or if you plan on getting them spayed and what you did to keep them calm because I think that's a lot of information that people would need and quite like to see. Also go and follow us over on Instagram at Millie Cockapoo and thank you for watching. Bye! <laughs>